Today we're going to make just about my favorite thing in the world, this Dorovos, which is dried South African Borovos sausage. Borovos is so wildly popular in South Africa, there are a bunch of regulations dictating what can and cannot be called Borovos. So today I'm going to show you a super traditional recipe for it, at least the one I learned from, and we're going to take that and we're going to dry it into this lovely Dorovos, which is simply Afrikaans for dry sausage. So let's go ahead and get started here and meet our meats, starting with two pounds of ground pork. I like to grind this myself so you wind up with those nice little pieces of fat, but pre-ground is fine, just aim for around 20% fat in each of our three meats. Next up we have two pounds of ground beef. And last but definitely not least we have two pounds of ground lamb. Now I had heard it was actually illegal to call your sausage bourgeois if it didn't contain at least pork and lamb, but after looking up the law, apparently that's not true, so you won't be breaking any laws if you don't put lamb in yours, but you definitely should. Now to get started with our seasoning, we want 5 teaspoons of salt, along with 1 teaspoon of fresh cracked pepper, half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and about a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. I'll put metric measurements for all of this on the blog. And finally, we need one tablespoon of coriander seeds, but not any coriander seeds. These need to be toasted coriander seeds. This is one of those small steps that really brings out a huge depth of flavor. I'll usually roast about a quarter cup at a time, use what I need, and just keep the rest till next time. One of these coffee grinders is super handy. If you don't have one of these, you can just put them in a bowl and use a glass to kind of crush them down. In fact, a lot of the really old traditional Bourvos recipes call for you leaving some of the coriander seeds whole in the mix, but I always really hated that, so I'm not going to be doing that today. Which seems like a well-grounded solution. <laughs> anyway, now we just need about one tablespoon of our toasted coriander powder. Now, I know this might seem like a bit of a strange spice mix with the nutmeg and the cloves and all that, but trust me, this stuff is the magic that really makes Bourvos Bourvos. We'll give that spice mix a little pre-mix just to make our lives easier before spreading it over our six pounds or so of meat. But before we get mixing, there is one final secret ingredient, and that is half a cup of brown vinegar. I'm using apple cider vinegar in this case, but malt vinegar would also be excellent. And a little more traditional. And to get mixing, really, your hands are the only way to go here. So just take a couple minutes and we'll gently combine together our meat and spices. It doesn't have to be perfectly homogenous, but you shouldn't notice huge streaks either. Once that comes together, it's a good idea to even it out and we're just going to cover this with a little plastic wrap and let it sit in the fridge for at least an hour to let all of those flavors marry together. And now that we're done with our meat, it's time to talk sausage. I'm going to be using these collagen casings and this is the first time I've ever tried these, so it'll be an adventure for everyone. I've never really liked working with natural sausage casings all that much, it's kind of gross, so I thought I would explore these as an alternative. Now, these are still made out of animal products, but uh, the final result is a lot easier to work with, I found. These are simply made out of natural animal collagen, which, as a bonus, is super healthy for your skin and hair and stuff like that. And look how easy it is just to cut off a piece and we can stick the rest of that in the bag until we need it. Now we're going to explore three stuffing options here. My favorite low-tech option is just a funnel like this. All we would need to do is thread the sausage casing on the end like that, and then you just stuff the meat straight down into the funnel like that. Normally if I'm going to do a small batch of sausages, this is how I like to do it. But today, because these are actually really small diameter sausages that I plan on drying, it's not really going to work. As you see, it's too hard to push the meat through that small little hole in the funnel. The intermediate option, which by far worked the best for me in this application, is one of these jerky guns. Yeah, I know, that is a strange name. It's basically a giant cock gun designed to shoot meat, like a meat cock gun. Say that three times fast. Or don't. They come with a variety of different nozzle sizes, so I'm going to need to switch to the small here to do these. If you'd like to occasionally make sausage, but you don't want to spend a lot of money, it could be worth picking one of these up. I'll put a link down in the description. They're really easy to use, we just need to fill it up with meat and then screw on the top with the appropriate nozzle attached. Now they call it a jerky gun, but I'll be honest, this is the first time I've made anything jerky-like with it. So to get started here, we have to thread our casings onto the actual nozzle. I don't think we're going to need that much, so let's just cut off a little bit here. And we want to get as much of this casing onto our nozzle as we can. Once we have, we want to pull it out a little bit and just snip off the remainder. Leave a little hanging off like that. We need some slack to tie off the end. 
but don't tie it off yet or you'll get a giant air bubble. First, we want to start squeezing down on the trigger to get that meat to start filling our casing. Once it has, now go ahead and tie off that end. And now we can just get stuffing. As you're depressing the trigger on this, kind of hold the casing forward so you get a little bit of pressure. Otherwise, you can easily understuff your sausage casing, resulting in kind of a small, wrinkly, limp sausage. And nobody likes a limp sausage. So we'll just keep on stuffing that in there. And at some point, you can twist these off into individual links if you want to or not. I tried both ways, and I found that this collagen casing creates links fairly well, but not as well as the natural casings. In fact, next time I do this for Dorvros, I think I'll just leave them all one giant long sausage. Much easier to tie up that way, and these casings tend to want to untwist on you anyway. But just for your reference, if you are making links, you don't want to twist them all the same way. You want to twist one one way and then the next one the other way. Otherwise, they'll all unwind on you. Once we come to the end of the casing, there's our first sausage. Now, I wanted to try one more sausage filling technique, which is my uh, Stand Mixer's Meat Grinder attachment, which has sausage filling accoutrements. Fairly predictable procedure here. We'll attach this to our stand mixer and fill the hopper with our Burvos mixture. And just like before, we're going to take our sausage casing and we want to thread that straight onto the nozzle, just like that. Because of the way this small nozzle kind of flares at the base, it was a little annoying. I couldn't get as much on here as I would like, so that's kind of strike one for this thing. This being the powered mechanical option, I really expected this to be the easiest and the quickest way to fill these sausages, but out of the three, I really have to tell you this was my least favorite way to do it. Probably because this machine was primarily designed for grinding. The circular hopper it has in the middle just had a really hard time grabbing a hold of the ground meat mixture and pushing it forward. I really had to push down on the plunger really hard and I wound up with a lot of finely ground meat stuck on the inside of this thing. A dedicated sausage stuffing attachment would probably be better in this case. Anyway, now that we're done casing the joint, we have our finished Borvo sausages. Now, we could cook these right away, we could freeze them, or what I'm going to do, I'm going to hang them up on a metal hanger like this and let them dry until they're Doravos. You might have noticed I didn't trim those ends off. Well, that just makes them a lot easier to tie up like you see there. Overall, these dry a lot faster than my traditional biltong recipe because they're a lot smaller. These will take two to five days to dry depending on how you like your Doravos. I like mine a little on the dry side, so I went the full five days, at which point you should actually be able to do this. Once they're as dry as you want them, just stick them in a plastic bag to stop them drying out further. And if you're concerned about mold, you can always freeze them until you need them. But mine never stick around long enough for that to be a problem. For those that are interested, I'm going to put a link in the description to that jerky gun and these collagen casings. In addition, if you'd like to help support the channel, I have some really cool new items in my Etsy store, link in the description. We have a bunch of these new laser etched artistic coasters. How cool is that? These have been individually painted, laser etched, and then sealed with hard acrylic, making them super durable as drink coasters or just super pretty to display. And they all come with soft cork backing, so you don't have to worry about any scratches on your table. And we have a bunch of really cool canvas art too, so definitely check that out. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Passion for Food. If you have, give me a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss our future videos. This has been Graham with a Passion for Food. <laughs>